All right, now we're looking at fillet wells. Okay, what type of joint we got here? T. T joint. So fillet welds aren't always just um, only on a T joint. We may have a joint like this, and a weld there, and a weld there. So what type of joint would this one be? Lap joint. Sorry? Uh, um, not necessarily, it depends on the application, it's more if, if we're using, if we're soldering, often this can be a joint where we might be soldering or brazing where we're relying on the fillet, the, the uh, filler metal to actually go in between the two layers and to bond, which is separate to fusion welding. But depending on the application where the joint will be required. Okay, so um, if we look at parts of the fillet world. What do we call this little bit here? The root. The root. So that's where it's very hard to tell if you've got fusion in the root with a fillet. Can't do it through a visual inspection because uh, you can't see. With the butt world of course you can flip it over and have a look at the other side of the joint. So often and especially what's the good thing of what we do when we're welding it um, 12 mil plate. Our fillets are done in our workshop on 12 mil plate. And then we can break these welds open, of course. And then once you've broken them open, you can reuse them and reposition them. But, but as you're doing that, of course, you can have your visual look inside and inspect inside the weld and see how the root's looking. Now, first up, we don't try, and at this level where we're at, I'm not worried about you trying to get that fusion. Um, it's, that's not my, my, my priority. The priority is you getting a uh, on the you know the visual appearance is pretty good, um, and the just the even uniformity of the actual well deposit and the t along the toes and so forth that's more of a priority. That'll come later. Looking at fusion later will come later, but it's the important aspect. So we're aware that's the important aspect, this important corner of the well there, that root, because that's where the strength is um, stems from that point. So root is is the very important part of a fillet well. And then we have this one here. What's that distance? That's a leg length. <coughs> leg length. Is there another leg length? Yep. So how we measure the leg length, I mean, how we measure a weld is through the size of the leg length. And we put that little fillet weld gauge on there to get our sizes. And that's measuring from here to, from the, from there to there, and from there to there. And we're checking, and it should be even both ways. It should be the same distance that way as it should be that way. Often you get welds that are like and like this. All right, and that's a defect because you haven't got an even deposit on both uh, on both sides. So you're looking for that even deposit and the leg length to be the same. That's what we're looking for, a nice uniform fillet weld. Then we have this here. What do we call that? Toe. Is there another toe? Yep. That one as well. Now, we also have for the um, through here 
That's your reinforcement as well, yep. Reinforcement. And then through here, yep, we have our what we call the design throat thickness. Design throat thickness. And you can also put in here just this one pointing to there. Does anyone know what that one's called? Right at the top here. It's called your face, yes? Okay, so they're the parts of the of the fillet weld. They're the, they're the fillet weld parts. We we uh, traditionally draw the T joint, which is this, but you can get a lap joint. Okay, um, you can have an outside corner. If I did that here, I'd have you making you've been using this sort of joint when you make a water container. So that's a still a fillet weld, but it's an outside corner. Corner fillet. Here we have still have a fillet well there, but we call this an inside corner fillet. Oh, they're probably, there might be a variation of that, but that's pretty much sorts of, would sum it up, I'd say. Then we have, looking at um, a distortion again here on the fillet, on the T-joint. Now, again, we draw a T-joint. And then I draw, and then I put a, um, I deposit a weld on that fillet. Now, again, the surface of that weld, just like on the butt weld, the surface is going to contract and distort and pull, and it's going to contract this way. Is it want to go? Is the weld? Is the this plate here at the top? Is it going to want to go that way or that way? To the right, isn't it? It's going to pull like that. Right, so if, if I've got to control that, and pre-setting is another thing, you know, we were talking about bending plates before we weld them, or try and, you know, or we can just offset them. So in this case, how I would have done this, I would have assembled this by that, knowing that I was going to weld, exaggerated, and I was going to weld this side, I'd be just pre-setting it back a bit, so that when it contracts, it allows for pulling it up straight. Okay, so we always, Try and allow for that. Remember, a distortion you don't eliminate, you're just trying to manage it and control it and get the forces to work for you. Okay, so that's it for um, fillet welds as well. Just a thing, thing to be aware of when it comes to any weld deposit, whatever it is, whether it's a butt weld or fillet weld, the more reinforcement you deposit, the worse that distortion is going to be. Alright? So if I've got a, a nice butt weld here, and I've put a bit of a, a nice, just a nice little, a nice little bit of reinforcement on top of that weld, that it's still going to contract, but I'm not going to have a problem like I would do with that. That's major. That extra weld you put in, 
distortion problems become huge. Okay. Sorry. Uh, not so much. I mean, it, it would a little bit. It's better than throwing in a bucket of water. But um, you know, the whole idea for preheating is not about distortion. The whole idea for preheating is to slow that cooling rate of the world. All right. Remember that. Okay. And I want you from here on in, try and avoid now cooling your, you know, when you're doing a welding unit here, yeah, cool your plates down to help it in a second get into the welding again. But when you start fabricating items, especially in the workplace, don't throw them, don't cool them down, don't rapidly cool them. From here on in, try and just let them naturally cool. Okay? Not really. <laughs>